So the recording has started. So welcome to the Unitime Agile API creation to supply data to other systems session presented by Stefan Schlutenhofer. Please leave yourself muted and cameras turn off during the presentation. I'd like to ask a question. If you, I'm sorry, if you like to ask a, ask a question, wait until the Q&A portion after the presentation or use the shared notes to the left above the user list to ask the presenter questions. Please use the chat box only for chat, not, que not questions to the presenter. If you have any technical issues, please send me a direct message and I will try to assist you in any way I can. So with that mandatory piece set, I'm leaving over the presentation to Stefani. Great. Thank you, Tomas. You're welcome. Um, as Tomas said, um, I'm here to talk about the Unitime Agile API creation to supply data for other systems. Um, basically, I'm going to give a quick overview of what Unitime is, then I'm going to talk about how we can, things we've done to make the Unitime data useful to others. I'll spend a little time talking about how we can make APIs on the fly. And then I'm going to do a demo of actually doing this and answer some questions. So what is Unitime? Unitime is a comprehensive academic scheduling solution. It contains five components, course timetabling, student scheduling, exam timetabling, instructor scheduling, and event management. It uses state-of-the-art optimization algorithms, and it is a web-based distributed data entry and timetabling in a multi-user environment. Um, when it comes to making data useful to others, you know, time contains a huge amount of data. When it comes to building schedules, I mean, we need course data, we need student data, we have exam data, um, and then event data, and you've got all the room and instructor data that goes in to support this. So we really have a large amount of data that, um, at least on our around Purdue, other systems would like access to. They um, need for just going about their day-to-day -day jobs. So we've created a lot of inter a standard APIs that allow this data to be pulled out, and in some cases you can actually use these APIs to push data into unit time. Um, so we've got a fairly full and complete set of APIs that come standard with unit time. But there's always some other need for data. And that's where we have two additional APIs that allow us to create non-standard APIs that are for whatever the need of the moment um, is. So one of them is our HQL report API, which is really the export, it's a flavor of our export API, and um, the script API. Um, the HQL report API is really a quick and easy. Um, these are for simple data extracts, um, something you can write a query for quickly and um, you just need it out in a straightforward format. Um, this takes advantage of our HQL reports user interface. This allows administrators to create um, ad hoc HQL reports that other users can run. HQL, it stands for Hibernate Query Language. Um, Unitime uses Hibernate to talk to the database. So any query you can create using HQL, you can pretty much pull out as an HQL report, and I'll show this more in the demo. Um, the thing of it is, once you've created an HQL report through the user interface, any stored HQL report can be run as an API call. And these are secured by user tokens, and the data um, pretty much out of the box can be returned in CSV format, JSON format, or Excel format. Um, here's a sample of what one of the calls will look like. I'll get into this later. Um, and then we've got the script API which is used when you need a little bit more complex data extract um, or to take more complex actions. Um, the script user interface um, in Unitime allows users to create, create, store, and run scripts using scripting languages. Usually we use um, 
Python or JavaScript type things. Um, and you can use these to call Java code within Unitime. And once again, just like the HQL reports, any script can be run as an API. They're secured by a token. However, in this case, you can return the data in the format of whatever you, the person who is writing the script cares to support. Um, if they want to go to the effort to do it, you can it'll you write it, you can export it in that format. The CSV is fairly easy to do just out of the box. Um, and here's an example of what that would look like, which I'll once again get into later. But once you can do this by being able to create APIs whenever you need to without having to go in and um, put new code in the repository, go through the whole um, deploy process and everything else, um, you can fairly quickly turn these around and your, the applications of this are pretty much endless. You can pull out data for Tableau dashboards, for homegrown applications, commercial apps. Um, if you wanted to create an interface to your student information system that updates your it periodically with data from Unitime, you could probably do that. And there's always, oh, we'd like to do this. It would be helpful if we could do that type. If we had this data, we could do this type applications that um, happen all the time, at least at Purdue. So, I mean, we've got quite a few of these. Um, we've got some Tableau dashboards, which I'll show you a couple of you that run out of data from our scripts. Um, we've got advisor dashboards that um, pull uh, out basically um, when the student has taken certain actions when it comes to registration, so the advisors can see that in the one place. Um, we've got, um, users pulling um, whether or not iPads are used in classrooms to um, configure those to know whether or not they need to configure the, the iPads and what users they need to set up on the iPads for those rooms. Um, they just there are quite a few uses for this. So these are very useful tools. All right, now I'm going to get in here and demo for you. All right, so what I've got up here right now is our course reports, which is um, on pretty much any of our sections here. Let me switch over here like to the student page. We have various reports, and these are all our the HQL report edit interface or running interface. They're kind of one and the same. So if I go in here, I have a courses report. We have tons of these, as you can see, because there's a never ending need for data out of unit time. So for purposes of this demo, I've created a current enrollment versus last like enrollment, which is a very useful thing to have. Um, if I hit edit here. You can see I've given it a name, a description, and my query is right here. And it's a simple little query where we're pulling out the subject, the course, um, the current enrollment. It's pulling back the last like instructional offering and getting the, the enrollment from it. Pulling it um, from the this percent session percent basically says pull it from the session, the current the currently logged in session for academic session for the user. Um, so it's pulling from that. I can say where it appears as far as within the user interface. So I have it on the courses page and administration page. If I had parameters for it, I could enter them here. And then whenever the user went to run this um, report, they would have to fill in those parameters. And if you're running the API, you would just add those parameters onto the API call and you would be able to run it. So if I run this report here, it runs fairly quickly and it pulls back um, the, all the courses for fall 2021, what their current enrollment is versus what their last like enrollment was last fall. And um, if I were a schedule manager or something, I would be watching these to see, do I need to add more seats or not? 
comparing where where am I in the enrollment for this versus last year. So this is something useful and something that might want to be sent off to a, a Tableau dashboard. All right. So that's one piece. Now, the night, fun thing is, now that I've got this, I can run this as an API. So here I've just got a curl command set up. Got the URL for um, Purdue here. It has export and the term for which it's going to be. So I'm doing fall 2021. Um, and this is pretty much standard on all the, the APIs. They will recognize if you put in term equals and then the academic um, term, the academic year, and the academic initiative concatenated together, it will match that within the um, unit time sessions. Um, I have my token here. Um, and then the output here is where we're saying HQL report. And I've got on this one dot CSV, which means it's going to return it in a CSV format. I can also put dot JSON or dot XLS, and it will report, turn it in either JSON or XLS format. And I can show that to you here in a second as well. And then the name of the report. If I just run this, we get the output from the um, report came scrolling across the screen. I could have put this into a file. Um, if I had put this into some other tool, it could have just parsed it as it came in. Um, so let me run this with the JSON as well. As you can see, it's now formatted in JSON. And I really, I had to do nothing here other than create the report and course report reports to get this ability. XLS, I have to put into a file, otherwise um, my screen will be very unhappy with me. Um, so I can open that up. And so there it is, pretty much right on the fly. All three formats have been created. All right. Now I'm going to move on to the scripts. I've already run this one because this script is a little um, bigger in what it does. But once again, similar type user interface to the HQL reports. Um, we have tons of these in here. Um, this one, once again, give it the name, description. Here you can select your um, scripting language. And in this case, I've selected Python. Um, I can give it whatever permissions I want for the sake of this. I just left it at script edit. But any permission that you can give to a user, you can say that users with this permission can run it. Um, and this is just a Python script. Um, I've got multiple um, procedures in here that can be, that are called to create the script that pulls out the data. Um, and I have a parameter in this case, because this report is doing course history enrollment by major. The last one just did looking, comparing all enrollment for the course, one term to another. But, you know, people are never satisfied with things like that. They want to see how it's breaking out. So in this case, I've given it also the ability, since it's a script and it's easy to do, you can look one year back. You could look five years back. Um, at you know, Purdue, we could even look 10 years back to see how this has changed over the years. But for purposes of this, I'm just defaulting it to one um, and running it that way. Um, so here I run it through the user interface. Um, I can pull this out into numbers and look at it, which will take a second here. And you can see now I've got, um, because things like Tableau prefer things not to be um, pivoted, um, here there's for, for the class multiple lines for A and E 200. Um, 2021, we had 318, 20 uh, um, AAE majors, 2020, there were 261, there were 
eight engineering first year CMP in 2020 were two. There are none in 2021. But this is something friendly to pull into the Tableau dashboard type thing. So it fairly quickly did that. Um, once again, um, if I do, um, I can run this from the command line. Um, the URL in this case, our API is script. The term again, um, we have the um, name of the script. Um, my token here, and um, I'm not running this through the unit time queue because I want the output immediately, so I'm setting queue equal to false. Um, if this was just something that you were going to take the data and drop it into a file somewhere, or it dropped the data into a file somewhere, you um, could let queue be true and it would not run it immediately necessarily. And then once you hit, again, my years of history variables defined here, and I've got it set to one. Um, this script will take a couple seconds to start putting out data because this does a little bit more. That's one of the reasons I went for summer because there's less data. Um, while this is running, I can come. I can come back to this in a minute. Um, I'll show you a couple of the dashboard Tableau dashboards that have been created off of this data. Not this particular one, but another script that has, has Tomas has written. Um, one of them is our um, course modality dashboard. Um, one of the big things that's ah, refreshing. On me. Okay, one of the big things um, this past year that was important um, was trying to figure out how many courses we had face-to-face -face, um, or in some sort of high, where the students got some time in front of the instructor and how, how we're shifting back and forth. So we created this course modality dashboard that kind of breaks it down. Um, well, I didn't. Um, our reporting area at Purdue did. So we just provided them the data. They created this. Um, but they can look from the... 2019, 2020, 2021, side by side, compare how much was face to face, how much was synchronous online, um, and how much was asynchronous. And they can break this down by college um, so they can see how the various colleges are doing on these um, different measures and seeing how they're bouncing back from going less face to face, coming back to more face to face this fall and um, same with the synchronous online and things like that. And they can break it down by department subject area. But the filters, you can even go down to the class level on this one. And then they've got another one that they're just working out the kinks on, but still looking at. Um, as far as for our residential students, how much do they have in person? How much do they have synchronous online? Which ones are the... Um, which courses do they have more? What are the heavy hitters when it comes to being synchronous or asynchronous? And um, just how, how much of the various areas are already registered and things like that. So it works through that. So those are some of the um, things that can be done with it. So here you can see I have output now from that API that um, this could have gone into any type of an application. It could have been sucked into a Tableau dashboard like the ones I showed, have shown you. Um, and that's um, pretty much what we can, some of the things we can do with these. So, um, let me stop that. And so um, if you have questions, um, please let me know. Um, that's pretty much it for this demo. Thank you, Stephanie. Yeah, I'm not seeing any, any questions right now. All right. Well, then thank you everyone for attending. Um, if you have more questions about your time, you can find data at our website, https. 
slash lunchinthetime.org. Or you can send me email, or you can send email to services at unitime.org, and one of us will get back to you. We also have one more of those expo sessions today. Oh, yes. Then we will be present. So if you want to talk to us directly or through yes. this big blue button, you can do that as well. So thank you, Stephanie. You're welcome. Okay, so everybody call.